Hallelujah, Lord. Father God, we come to... Will all who are able to stand, please stand for the reading of God's holy word. Our scripture lesson for this morning is taken from Psalms 30. Psalms 30. <clears throat> I will exalt thee, O Lord. For thou hast lifted me up, and hast not made my force to rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should go, not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment. In this favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And in my prosperity. I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by the favor thou hast made my mountain to stand strong, thou didst hide thy face, and I was troubled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. What prophecy is there for my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and gird me with gladness. To the end, that my glory may sing praises to thee, and not be silent. O oh, Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever and evermore. The word of God for the people of God. From all that dwells below the... Seek his face. 
Father, in this place, in this sanctuary, there are so many needs that only you can handle and take care of. Each of us have our own individual circumstances and issues. And today, God, we're just asking for your divine help. Help us this morning, Father. Some of us just need to be encouraged while we're waiting for our change to come, that you would just hold us together and keep our minds at peace. Some of us, oh Father, just need you to open up some doors of opportunities. Our lives have become stagnant, too routine. And we believe that you are a God who promised to give us more. Therefore, Father, we anticipate more to come to us. Some of us, Father, are going through some family crisis, hardships. And we just need you, God, to bring peace in the midst of our storm. Bring unity and love in the midst of anger, stress, and strain. Father, we just need your help this morning. There are some things we can do on our own, but yet we have our limitations. But you are God who is not limited or bound by anything. You are God who has all power in your hand. Some of us, Father, just need a healing touch this morning. We're wrestling day in and day out with physical trauma and physical sickness, mental anguish. Oh, God, you are a help in ages past. You have proven that you are a healer and that you can heal any situation. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare victory over any illness that has affected us right now. So God, we are believing that you will come in and come out of and help us to recover and recuperate and to get back on our feet again. Now some of us need some jobs, Father. We're gonna be real about this. We need some jobs. We need employment. And so God, we're asking you this morning to help us to make a way out of no way for us this morning. Help us, Father, that we will be able to not be beggars of men and women, but we be able to be self-sufficient. Help us this morning, Father. You're the only one who can rescue us and deliver us. This morning, Father, we just need a touch from glory. We're praying now for this marvelous aggregation of women who have considered themselves to come in a spirit of unity and to do your will father to merge with power and to have women power to go out throughout this world we're praying for the delta father all over the world father bless them this morning help them to continue to do your your bidding this morning and blessings this morning father Keep them whole and keep them in the unity of love. Help them, Father, to not be competitive and be position-driven, but they will be purpose-driven, driven, God, to do your will. Then, Father, this morning, we just want you to stop by here. Help us out now. We need your holy touch. We need an anointing. We need to be refreshed. We need to be rejuvenated. We need to be revived this morning. We, we need to be so much in touch with you this morning. So God, we open up our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our spirit this morning. We just wish you would just come on in here and just take control and charge over everything that, is, that has been set up by strongholds of demonic power. 
Release us this morning and set us free, Father. We believe in your Holy Ghost. We believe that you are the God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. You're the God who reigns over everything. That You can come in here, God, and just shake us one more time. And our dungeons will fall, God. And chains will fall. Bless us this morning, Lord. We know we're not worthy. But God, if you just have some mercy in spite of what we've done forgive us of our sins and our trespasses our iniquities and just help us this morning we need help and nobody can help us like you help us breathe upon us the freshness of your love and power upon us and then god let us not be so selfish that we just keep it on the inside but let us express our love to you let us express our gratitude and our thanksgiving. Come on, Father, give us a praise. Give us a praise in us. Come on and give us a praise inside of us. Come on and give us a thankful spirit. Come on and let's give God the joy of praising him this morning. If the Lord has ever done anything for you, I want you to just give God some praise this morning. Thank you for his glory. Thank you for his healing. Thank you for his deliverance. Thank you for being there for you. Thank you for answering prayer. Thank you for holding you together. Thank you for not falling apart. Come on out here and give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Glory to his name. In Jesus' name, amen. I promise that Dennis, I behave. Oh, time is filled with swift transition. Not of earth unmoved can stand.
Say, hold on. If we didn't have that hand to hold on, we wonder sometimes where would we be. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hold on to, to God's unchanging hand. For he never changes. We change, but he is still God. God Almighty, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hold on to the mighty and powerful hand of our God. Amen? Amen. Amen. First of all, I'd like to just acknowledge my pastor, my mentor, my friend, the Reverend Dr. Frederick A. Wright and Mrs. Wright. I thank God for them and uh, what they are in, not only in my life but in my family's life. So I just thank God and appreciate you to the rights. Amen. Amen. To my clergy peers and for their support and everlasting love and uh, encouragement, I just thank God for each and every one of you. I thank God for this opportunity to stand before you to share a word from the Lord. In times like these, we do need a word from the Lord. Amen. We can look at all that's going on around us and become discouraged and depressed and worried and unsure, but uh, we know that we have an everlasting God with an everlasting almighty hand. And we know that he did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Amen? Amen. You heard from the reading this morning from the Psalm 30, verses 11 through 2. 11, excuse me, actually 1 through 12. I'm going to lift up verses 11 through 12. Reading from the New Living Translations, it says, You have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. That I might sing praises to you and not be silent. Oh, Lord, my God, I will give you thanks <laughs> forever. Amen? Amen? 
I'd like to think with on this subject, living a year of gratitude. Please pause with me for prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for your word and the power of your word. And we thank you, Father, for those who are here today to hear your word. And we pray, God, that there would be words of encouragement, Lord, maybe a challenge for them to be more like you would have them to be and to be a witness to someone who is in darkness. So, Lord, I just ask at this moment that you let the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For, Father, you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Living a year of gratitude. Amen. Because God works deep in our lives to transform our deepest sorrow into an abiding joy, our goal should be to maintain hearts of gratitude. Christians who are continually grateful. Of all the things that we resolve to do this year, uh, where does our practice of gratitude fit in? We scheduled in healthier eating habits and more physical activity and more time spent in prayer and studying and meditation on God's word. Uh, young people are resolving to study more to build better uh, study skills and practice more on their musical instruments, their dance and their sports activity. Young people and old alike have vowed less time on social media and less times on games. Uh, hello, somebody. Amen. Uh -huh. But I ask you on which list, and if on the list, how far down on the list is, consider practicing an attitude of gratitude. Today, we're looking at a story about what deep gratitude looks like. Well, you may ask, what is gratitude? And yes, I'm glad you asked that question. Is it synonymous with thankfulness? Probably your thesaurus would say that it is. But today, from a spiritual and from a biblical aspect, I would like to for us to consider gratitude as something beyond thankfulness. Yeah, yeah. We often use thankfulness situationally. Even with God, we say thank you for this and thank you for that. And yes, we should thank God for each blessing, but I'd like to consider gratitude of thankfulness with praise, amen? Uh, real gratitude isn't just feeling what we feel when something good happens to us or when someone does something nice for us. Real gratitude is a response or an action that demonstrates just how thankful we really are. We are commanded over and over in the scriptures to give thanks to God and be grateful for all the many benefits and blessings he bestows upon us. We aren't just commanded to feel grateful. We are commanded to be grateful. Not just to feel it, but to show it. God wants us to respond to him in ways that demonstrate our deep gratitude for what he's done for us and for what he's given to us. For centuries, Christians have found the book of Psalms to be a powerful resource for all dimensions of life, the highs, the lows, and everything in between. Some songs, such as Psalm 30, portray both laments and praise, thanksgiving, gratitude, simply put, sorrows, but with an array of hope. Amen. Psalm 30 is a classic psalm of gratitude where the speaker narrates to the congregation what God has done to deliver him from his crisis. The familiar psalm written by David was written for the dedication of a house. Some scholars say that it was a house of David as a prologue in the King James Version states, 
Others say that it was for the dedication of the temple that was to be built, as shown in the New Living Translation prologue. But we know from the psalm that David had been in distress. He extols God for having lifted him up and preserved him from the cruelty of his adversaries. David's song, as recorded in the Message Bible, gives us a better insight. He says, I give you all the credit, God. You got me out of this mess. You didn't let my foes gloat. God, you pulled me out of the grave. You gave me another chance at life when I was down and out. He goes on. The nights are crying. He says, your eyes give out, but they give way to laughter. But then David admits when things were going great, he said, I crowed. He said, God made him king of the mountain. Uh, But then David looked in another direction. Instead of looking to God, he looked to self. So God turned his face on David. We talk often about the love of God, and he is a loving God. uh, But we want to beware of the wrath of God, all right? Our disobedience and not following through on what God has asked us to do can cause God to turn his back on us. I don't know if you've ever had a situation when you were praying and regardless of how you prayed, there was no answer. And there's a book titled, When God is Silent. You know, but we don't stop praying. We continue, well, first of all, confessing whatever it is that we've done that causes God to turn his back. And then we humbly submit our petition to him. Confessing his pride and arrogance, David says, I called out to you, God. Uh, I laid my case before you. He pleaded, help me out of this. God again came to David's rescue, and David proclaims, you did it. You changed wild lament into whirling dance. Uh, You ripped off my black mourning band and decked me with wild flowers. He says, I'm about to burst with song. I can't keep quiet about you. God, my God, I can't thank you enough. (laughs) Would you say those verses reflect the majority of us in our attitudes right now? Instead of constantly grumbling about our circumstances, God wants us to radiate with gratefulness. Instead of silently taking things for granted, all of God's goodness, we are to overflow with gratitude to the extent that we can't keep it to ourselves. Like the song says, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I just uh, couldn't keep it to myself. So there are some times in our lives when God does some things for us and extraordinary things that we know that it was only God that did it, that uh, we just can't keep it to ourselves. We are confronted with many pits in life. What can we glean from David's story that will help us on our Christian journey where we will face pits in life, dark days, dark circumstances, and yes, sometimes dark people. I submit to you first that we must be grateful for the times that God lifted us. David described his illness as at the very brink of death. We used a phrase, one foot in the grave and the other foot on the ground. David was so sick that his enemies, for the most part, had laid him out on a stretcher with the sheets pulled up over his head. His enemies were gloating, but God was lifting, healing, restoring. In your mind's eye, imagine a bucket being pulled from a deep well, not only for David, but for us. 
God has to dig deep because of where we are, yeah. what our circumstances are, what our hurts are, what our pains are. And I don't know about you, but uh, I have had some uh, deep well situations, right? Uh, situations that only a loving God can reach deep uh, down and lift me up. Yeah. So be grateful and celebrate the times when he has lifted you up knowing that he's the same God, and if he did it before, he will do it again. David's gratitude was not only the assurance that God would answer, but his was the experience that God had answered. Secondly, gratitude begins where self-centeredness ends. David confessed, God brought me into prosperity. Yet David began to trust in what he had received rather than depend wholly on the Lord who had provided it. As a result, the Lord hides his face from David and David is again brought into great distress. Gratitude forces us to always acknowledge that uh, every good uh, not some, but every good and perfect gift comes from God. Not because we are so worthy and uh, not because we can earn it or work our way to it and uh, not because we deserve it, but only because of God's love, God's grace, his mercy, his faithfulness, and his great kindness toward us. Amen? Uh, young people, Know that you are abundantly blessed. Uh, yes, your parents, your guardian, they work to receive a paycheck so that you can have the things that you have. But it is God who opened the doors for them to have the education, the job, the health to work. So David fears his loss and makes an earnest prayer and supplication. He is restored to the divine favor and filled with joy. He purposes to glory in God alone and trust in him evermore. Third, gratitude sustains praise and joy. Many times we say, uh, I would be happier if my problems would just go away. <laughs> I could be full of joy, but first my situation needs to get better. Sometimes for some people that may bring temporary happiness, but to achieve a sustaining joy, we need to demonstrate gratitude for the blessings we have already received. We must keep an attitude of gratitude so that even when situations start to go bad, uh, we can hit rewind to the times in life when God was faithful and when he worked it out for us, when he blessed us, and we can rejoice once again and again in his faithfulness toward us. It says that we teach our children to say, please, and thank you. But things are different with God. God says, come to me with your gratitude. Come to me and say thank you. Rejoice in what I've already done for you. And then you can come and say, please, Father, will you? But we should approach him first with our gratitude, with our thanksgiving. Giving testimony or bearing witness is an old tradition in Christian communities. Such words powerfully seek to draw listeners into the experience of thanksgiving so that God's providence is not limited to the speaker but becomes part of the life of the congregation. Yeah. The poetry of Psalm 30 thus becomes a compelling way to express faith in terms of prayer and thanksgiving. Sure. Life as praise and gratitude would be an appropriate response to this psalm. The goal of the divine deliverance narrated in the psalm reaches beyond the rescue itself to the response of gratitude as a completion of the prayer. So David acknowledged God's goodness toward him. 
But he didn't say, thank you, God, but I'm going to go and sit down and keep this to myself. In fact, when he argued with God about why God should rescue him after he had sinned and had been disobedient, he said, well, who is going to praise you? Or how can I praise you if, if you turn your favor from me? So with God rescuing David over and over again, in spite of his sins, in and out of sin, and we know his confession in Psalm 51 when he just had to break down and just ask God for a complete forgiveness. He created me, Lord, uh, a new heart and help me, Lord, to have a right relationship with you. All right, all right. E event delivers a believer's experience should otherwise prompt a full expression of praise. We need to share with our children and with our young people this power of praise, this power of gratitude. You know, we have generations now, and I don't want to say this current or youngest generation, of entitlement. You know, we're not entitled to anything, right? Uh, we work, we do the responsible thing. But even in spite of God, that, if God was not so loving and was not so willing to shower us with his blessings, we would not have and enjoy the things that we enjoy. So David tells us, I was sick. He said it was almost to the pit. To the pit was close to the grave, as I said, one foot in, one foot out. But he pleaded with God, and so that tells us and should remind us of the healing and sustaining and resurrection power of our God. When others count you out and when others say that it's over and test results say this and something else says that, say, but <laughs> my God, my God, I believe him. Uh, to be a healer. I do believe him to be a healer. And then we need to share our testimonies with others so that they will know that God is still in the healing business. Miracles are not just a thing of the Old Testament. God still performs miracles day by day. Amen. So I grew up in a home with a mother <laughs> that praised and that had a heart of gratitude. <clears throat> like all most mothers, they had their favorite scriptures. They had their favorite songs. And we all need a song. You need a song that you can turn to and a scripture that you can turn to when you have things going on in your life. Oh, she loved uh, Jesus, keep me near the cross. And she loved, uh, it is well with my soul. But then I go way, way, way back down south. Well, you know when she had really <laughs> made that connection. And Brother Ever, she used to break out in a song that said, uh, I uh, am so great. That I have Christ And he is uh, in my life The song goes on to say What would my life be Without him uh, It would be very, very dark and drear it goes on to say, that's why I'm grateful, uh, truly grateful uh, that I have Christ and he's in my, he's in my life. Now I know there's a more than song that has come about, you know, talking about being grateful and and that's okay too, Hezekiah Walker leads us into some praise and, and some gratefulness. And uh, he says, I'm grateful for the things that you've done. And uh, 
Yes, I'm grateful for the victories that you won. And uh, he said, I could go on and on about your works uh, because I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just to praise you, Lord. And flowing from my heart or the issues of my heart, it says it's gratefulness, grateful, grateful. It's flowing from my heart. I don't know about you today. I don't know what your pits and your downfalls are. And I don't know where you stand with that relationship with God. If right now you need a savior who can reach down deep and bring you up from the muck and miry clay. Or if you are one that you had a testimony that God has already lifted me, then you need to share that testimony. But I am so glad uh, that God is my all in all. Uh, I am so glad and so grateful uh, that he is a healer. I'm so grateful as this Psalm says, yeah, we're gonna have some struggles and uh, yes, we're gonna have to get through some nights, uh, but it says that joy will come uh, in the morning. The psalmist also said that there will be some wrath, that God may turn his back on us sometime, but he promises us that God's favor is for a lifetime. So God never truly leaves us uh, nor forsakes us. So we need to develop hearts of gratefulness. And if you don't have a testimony that God healed you or God kept your children or God gave you a job or gave you a house or a car. If you don't have anything to testify about, uh, I just want to share with you uh, the greatest gift of all. Uh, I want to let you know that God loved us so much uh, that on a Friday, his son went out and hung on a cross. He was without sin, uh, but for you and for me, he took on our sins and he thought it not robbery to be hung on an old rugged cross. Uh, we know they jeered at him. They laughed at him. They put a crown of thorns on his head, say, if you be the king that you said, then here is your crown, a crown of thorns. They told him, they didn't listen to what he had said beforehand. Uh, I will go, uh, but I will return uh, in three days. Uh, so he went down, uh, yeah, in a grave, uh, didn't even have his own grave, uh, went down uh, in a bar tomb. Uh, but the word of God tells us he went on down deeper so he could make things right for our salvation. But then on that third day morning, hallelujah, just like he said he would, uh, he rose up. <laughs> All power in heaven and earth is in my hand. Uh, and we have victory because of him. We have a resurrected life because of him. And even our gratitude, most of all, when we don't know what to say or how to pray to the Father, we can be grateful that he intercedes on our behalf. Uh, and when we're so overjoyed or uh, so distraught, that we don't know how to put our pain out to God. Uh, the word said that the Holy Spirit uh, would give action for us. So let's this year, let's practice gratitude. It doesn't mean we're gonna have all the things that we want. Most of the things we want, we don't need. And uh, God did promise to supply all of our needs uh, through his riches and glory, through Christ Jesus. And he is true to his word, so we know that he will supply our needs. So I don't know about you this morning, but I am so, so, so grateful, Lord. I thank you for what you are in my life, Lord. I thank you, Father, for keeping me through difficult moments. I thank you, God, for keeping me through health situations. And I thank you, God, for keeping me through the loss of loved ones, Lord. And I just thank you that every day you're still there. And that still small voice just gives us the assurance and the courage. Yes, you are my child. I love you. I'll never leave you. 
I'll never desert you. That is something to be grateful for. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, and even with our trials, our struggles right now, the word tells us we can't go through enough pain right now that will not compare to the glory in Jesus Christ. So what awaits us is much, much better. And I don't know about you, but I want to have a heart of gratefulness. Let God know how I appreciate him. So on that great day, uh, that great getting up morning, he can open the doors and say, well done, uh, thy good, uh, thy faithful servant. Didn't always do everything right. Uh, didn't always say everything right. Uh, didn't always treat people like you should have. But you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Welcome, my daughter. He can do the same for you. Pastor will come now and extend the invitation for anyone who is outside uh, the covenant. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, certainly want to thank God for this message today to remind us of to have an attitude of gratitude what was one of the so many things that was so striking to me is the fact that we can be grateful for so many things in life There were two occasions that I am aware of where I should have died. Two of them. And both of them were in the hospital. It was then that I realized how grateful I am for salvation. Got a nice family, nice home, a nice place to worship. But all that was secondary when I thought about leaving this world and I was extremely grateful that the Lord died for me and I'm saved by his blood and that if I leave I'm on my way home what about you do you have another residence called heaven That day coming, 
Don't know when, don't know where, but it's coming. And if you don't have your resident fixed now, why don't you do so? We're not asking you to join us. We're asking you to just get right with God. That's what we want you to do first. Then you can find a place of worship. So if you need to get right with God today, come on down and we will teach you and show you how to do that. Secondly, if you feel led by the Spirit to come and be a part of this Christian witness here at Quinn Chapel, based on Christian experience, we will open our arms to you because it's not our church. It's God's church who has given us the privilege to be here. I know sometimes we want to think it's ours, but it's not ours. No, this church, this church is over 165 years. So it's been here before we got here. It's going to be here after we leave. But it's God's church. Jesus said, upon this rock, I shall build my church. And the gates of hell. So if you want to come and get right with God or come and be a part of Christian family, come on. That's the choir saying, grateful, grateful. Grateful, grateful. Come on down now. If you need somebody to walk with you, Quinn Chapel members are ready to walk with you at this point. Oh, grateful, 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 grateful. Shake hands with your neighbor because you never know if you get that chance again. You never know if you get that chance again. Shake hands with your neighbor because you never know. Grateful, grateful, grateful. 